An outstanding movie from Israel. This is 2011's Footnote. Let me tell you why I think this is a forgotten classic, why people need to rewatch it or watch it for the first time. It's only 10 years old, but I need to revive it here. Let's talk about Footnote coming up next. <laughs> Footnote's a movie that I think has appeal on multiple levels. It's about two Israeli scholars, very meticulous scholars. One's a Talmudic scholar. The other one is the son of the Talmudic scholar, and he is better than his father in every way in terms of scholarship. The father and the son aren't really rivals, but they disagree over research methods, and the father is certainly jealous of his son. The beginning of the movie has the son being inducted to the academy, I think, of arts and sciences. Well, the father has not, and you get a shot that lingers over the father as he hears his son's entry speech into the academy. So first, the subject matter here is academic scholarship. Now, a lot of people will not perhaps relate to that. So for me, I am or have been an academic. I've written a dissertation. I do relate to some of the conundrums and problems in this movie between the father and the son, especially with this older man who hasn't gotten a claim. He's worked for 30 to 40 years on texts in libraries looking at words that no one would care about except for him, and yet he wants to be honored and revered for what he's done because he's been a diligent scholar for a long time. Now, while the academic side of this movie may not be interesting, the relationship between the father and the son in the son who has a son, a teenage son who seems listless and doesn't know what to do with his life, is really profound and interesting. Plus, this movie is also about Israel's political and cultural history and future, where the whole country is going. In a way, this is a personal story, but it's also trying to be representative, I think, of the nation of Israel and the people of Israel in general. The movie's central conundrum, I think, is really interesting. The father, who has been denied access to the inside, the interior of the academy, and he hasn't been honored, his most noteworthy thing in life is to have had a footnote written in his honor by his own teacher. And his, that's why the movie is titled Footnote, and it's supposed to be funny because this man who has worked so long on texts and in academia, his best accomplishment is a footnote. Well, anyway, he's called up one day and is told he's won the Israel Prize. This is a prestigious prize, prestigious national prize, that is. And he's been up for the prize for over 20 years. He's not won it ever. He hasn't made a lot of scholarship that's been groundbreaking or, or has been amazing to a number of other people. So it's very pretty strange that he's won this prize, but he, he's very happy that he's been accepted finally. However, and here's the catch, his son is told by the committee that, oops, there's been a mistake. They called up Professor Skolnick, but they got the wrong Professor Skolnick. They meant to call up the son, not the father. So now the son has a conundrum. He's sort of alienated from his father, but he needs to go tell his father, hey, I won the prize. Actually, he refuses to do this. And I won't tell you any more, but there's a lot of tension here <laughs> with the son especially. What should he do? Should he accept the prize, but also devastate his father and disillusion his father, telling them that, that he hasn't won the prize? Or should he perpetrate a fraud, which is that his father wins the prize, but really shouldn't have? In a sense, the story is partly about the price of truth and whether the truth should be known or should be covered up. This is a classic conundrum in a whole lot of stories, but it's really well done in this movie in particular, especially as it's grounded in the relationship between these two men. <laughs> I love a lot of things about this movie. First, the musical score is fun and jaunty for a while and, and in different parts of the movie, but it gets more serious as the movie goes along. The score is great. The directing is quite good here. There's a great couple of intercutting moments in this movie where the son has to describe to someone who or what the father's scholarship is and the significance of it, while the father then has to describe that about himself. And those two scenes are intercut really well. There's a fabulous montage at near the end of this movie. I won't tell you what it's about 
because if they did, it would ruin the movie for those of you who haven't seen it. But this montage should be analyzed and, and picked apart as to how it's constructed. It's really that good. The movie also has faint shades of Ingmar Bergman's Wild Strawberries. As you recall, Wild Strawberries is about an older man, a scientist, who's going to go be honored at an Academy of Arts and Sciences. By the end of the movie, he is. The movie focuses on the older man, his accomplishments, and what's been lost or what he has ignored in his life. This movie has a couple of shades of that, including a sequence. It's either a dream or reality. I'm not entirely sure, and it's near the end of the movie. You'll know it when you see it. And the focus on the older man. Here, this scholar in the movie, the elder Skolnick, has been ignored instead of being praised, and he wants to be praised. And yet he doesn't want to be praised. It's a real interesting psychological conundrum on his part. I will not spoil the movie for those of you who haven't seen it. For those of you who have, well, let's talk about the ending. So big time spoiler alert. This movie ends on a cliffhanger. It's definitely a postmodern move to end without really reaching the climax of the movie. To end right before the climax or what could be a climax. Now, something like Thomas Pynchon's The Crying of Lot 49, the ultimate postmodern American novel, does this too. A number of stories do this. So the question would be why it ends with a cliffhanger. And one simple idea here is that the, it's up to the viewer to decide what the future will be. The characters don't get to decide, neither does the director, anybody involved in the movie's production. The movie leaves it up to you to finish the story. Will the father go out on stage and accept the award knowing there's a fraud? Will the son and everybody else who knows about the fraud accept it as well? Or will the father go out on stage and reject it and say his son really won? I mean, the, the question of the ending is, he. there's multiple pathways. And which pathway will this father, actually everybody else, but particularly the father, the elder Skolnick take? The question of should fathers be honored even though it's fraudulent comes up here. And then for Israel itself, perhaps, given that this is the Israel Prize, it's given by the President of Israel, there's some nationalistic political concerns, perhaps. Should the nation and the family revel in the truth and announce the truth even though it hurts, or perpetuate frauds and lies? This is a classic conundrum as well, brought up in Plato's Republic, the idea of the noble lie, for example. But here, interestingly, we know the truth, the audience. And the question is, do you want it announced or not in the end? Do you want these characters to say, well, here's what the truth really is, or should this father really get this award? The ending will undoubtedly annoy a lot of viewers, but I love the choice here. I think it's profound and interesting, and it goes along with a lot of things happening in this movie. Will this father be accepted into polite society, into the elite academic scholarly society he wants to be in, or will he be on the outside of that society. You'll notice at the very beginning of the movie when he leaves the award ceremony and tries to come back in but is blocked by the guard. That's a metaphor obviously for the father being rejected by you know academic society and the elite academics who give prizes for over 30, 40 years of his life. But now at the end of the movie, will he get that prize or not? Will he himself accept it even though he knows it's wrong? I love that tension in this movie. I like the characters, the acting, everything is great about this movie. It I gave it five stars on Letterboxd. I think it deserves it and deserves to be rewatched. I watched it when it came out, but the year it came out in 2011, 2012, I really, really liked it then. I watched it 10 years later and I still like this movie. So if I agree with my younger self, I think this movie is legitimately very good to great. What do you think about Footnote? Let us know in the comments and please subscribe. Thank you. Have a great day.